Hey everyone, it's lovely to be back again. So, I just quit Diablo Immortal. I cannot face it anymore. My review will be coming soon over on our gaming channel. Uh, but I need to talk about something that I discovered that is utterly pay to win. And also, uh, it's a new thing that I don't think people have really been talking about that much. Uh, because you always don't want to be in that situation where, you know, the headlines are popping, so everyone says a few things, and then the story gets forgotten about. It's important that whenever there's a meaningful update that uh, that we talk about it. And uh, it turns out Magic Find is, like, deeply problematic in this game. The way that they've designed it is so crafty, so sneaky, and it really does go against what Wyatt Cheng said. He said that you cannot buy gear uh, in any way with money. And of course, everyone's like, yeah, okay, but you can buy the gems that go into the gear, and those are super important. And this is a thing where, can you buy gear? No. Can you buy the ability to get more gear? Yes. And I guess, to Wyatt, that's a meaningful difference. Hmm. I don't like doing things that are sort of raking someone uh, over the coals in terms of the words, but uh, that's what he said. Yeah. And the spirit of what he said is just not true and that's yeah. why today i have to explain this system to everyone yeah i think it's if i think it's kind of getting to the point where if people are trained in pr to speak as if the only thing that matters is will this hold up in court then i think from the player perspective from the user perspective it's fine to drag them all over the coals until they actually start behaving like i guess humans who care yeah. about the users now the first thing i've got to talk about is how magic find actually works in this game here's the tooltip I have to take them at their word. This is the tooltip they provide the players. Increases the chance for monsters to drop higher quality items. Doesn't say high quality items, it says higher. That maybe means instead of a two uh, stat legendary, a three stat legendary, okay? Now this is very important because of combat rating. Combat rating just takes like all your stats, your, your gems, your resonance, and it just boils them all into a number, a bit like gear score. Now, the thing is that later on difficulties of the game that are, of course, a part of the endless gear treadmill that is the ARPG genre, those not only are they gated by your Paragon level, they're also gated by your combat rating. So, obviously, higher quality gear will increase your combat rating more. And for the easy example of this, you can get two stat legendaries that have two primary attributes, right? So, mine might give me maybe 20 strength, 20 agility. That's... I don't think they'd give that, but whatever, random numbers. Um, a three-stat legendary would give you another primary attribute with the, you know, the same actual quantity. So basically a third more stats, way more combat rating. So those three slots or those three stats uh, legendaries are more important. And if magic find increases the chance to drop higher quality items, then that would mean more chances of three stat than two stat. That's really big. Okay. Now let's talk about how Magic Find works. So right now my character is no Magic Find, right? Now that's because while I do have a full set of legendary gems, um, I have, uh, they're all rank one. I do actually have a, uh, a three, no, it's a two star out of five star that I guess I just got kind of lucky with, right? Oh, very nice. That's incredibly lucky, actually. Wow, woo. Yeah, well... <laughs> Just wait till you find out how much upgrading that thing would be. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, none of these gems will give me any magic find until I upgrade them to rank 5. Because remember, <laughs> you've got the ranks of your gem and then the stars of your gem. You can get 1 stars and 2 stars. Those gems will always be 1 and 2 stars. And then you can get 5 star gems, which can drop at either 2, 3, 4, or 5 out of 5 stars. Those can be ranked up and increased in their stars, but to do that requires, like, an ungodly quantity. Uh, you know, it's, like, easily hundreds of, of dollars. It's mad, okay? So, once you upgrade a one-star gem to rank five, that gem will give you 5% magic find. If it's a two-star legendary gem... That's going to be 10% magic find. And this means that a free-to-play player, theoretically, can get themselves up to like 30% magic find, right? With a full set of rank 5 one-star gems. And if you get sort of lucky with some two-star gems, wow, maybe you could be getting up to 60% magic find. 
Sound, sounds awesome, right? You know, here's some tool tips uh, from the game, right? Increases chance to find magic items by 5% unlocks at rank 5. And then you can see here for the 2-star gem, that is uh, the same, but it's 10% unlocking at rank 5. Okay, what about 5-star gems, though? Well, here's the thing. As you know, the 5-stars can drop up multiple stars up to 5. They can be ranked up. You can increase their star rating. But the thing that actually matters here is that any 5-star gem will have 15% magic find when you upgrade it to rank 5. That means that somebody who could just quickly get a full set of these gems, they are actually going to have 90% magic find. That is a quantity of magic find that is basically not achievable for free-to-play players, or to be honest with you, even for players who are using the Battle Pass and the Boon of Plenty. You're just not going to get enough resources to upgrade these. You're, you're, it's just not going to happen, right? But here's the thing. It gets worse because right here, I kind of outlined how potentially a free-to-play user could actually get some of this magic find. Okay, objection, upgrades, which of course I've spelt wrong in the doc. Go <laughs> me. So Matt, this is where it gets worse, right? So your upgrades to rank five are what you actually need to unlock this magic find. Now to get a one-star gem from rank one to rank five, you're going to need 31 gem power. What is gem power? Well, gem power is, you know, the latent energy within a legendary gem or a gem fragment, right? Now, essentially what happens is you break down legendary gems that you have into this upgrade material to rank up your legendary gems that you want to use, okay? So a one-star legendary gem is worth one gem power. And that actually means that you will be destroying 31 legendary gems in order to get a single one-star gem up to rank 5 to get 5% magic find. Now, if you are breaking down two-star gems, well, those are actually worth four gem power each. A five-star gem? That's 32 gem power. That shows how differently they are valued in, uh, in the game economy here, right? But here's the thing. A free-to-play player you'll need to find an absurd amount of one-star legendary gems, right? Like 31 of them. Now, the thing with the one-stars is they can be crafted by the player using a whole bunch of runes. You get these runes from uh, rare crest runs and the legendary ones as well. Of course. Uh, now, with those runes, you can you know, reasonably <laughs> actually craft a decent amount of rank ones, but not really enough to make a humongous dent on just the sheer amount you would need to actually upgrade to rank five to get this magic find, Okay. Now, what about these two stars? Because that's when we're going to get our 10% magic find per gem, right? That's a lot bigger. Here's the deal. You can craft a random two-star legendary gem by using 28 fa runes, okay? Now, these fa runes cost 18 burning embers. You can get 200 embers per week by just doing, um, I don't know, like maybe 15 or I forget exactly the number, just a bunch of the uh, Elder Rift runs. And that includes runs that are done without a rare or legendary or eternal legendary crest being put in. Now, that means that getting yourself a two-star legendary gem requires 504 embers. That's two and a half weeks of farming for something that is worth four gem power. Okay? Now, of course, if you're a free-to-play player, you're not going to want to take the two-star gem that you got and just destroy it for some gem power because a two-star legendary gem is a decently rare thing. But if you want to upgrade that two-star legendary gem that you farmed two and a half weeks for, well, guess what? It gets even worse. So, bringing a two-star from rank one to rank five, which is what you need for the 10% magic find, costs 25 gem power. Oh, less than a rank one gem. Or a one-star gem. But, it costs duplicate gems. Oh, of course, yeah. Because if you want to move from rank three to rank four, you need a... Uh, I believe it is a rank one dupe. And if you're going from four to five, then I believe it's a rank three dupe. But of course, to get that rank three dupe, you then need to upgrade another one. So you're just kind of going through this crazy number of gems. So that's completely insane. But what if you don't want to go through all the work to get those dupes? You just go to the market board and buy them with platinum, which essentially is a mostly premium currency. And just for some of the madness here, like, it might cost, like, 700, 800 platinum for a one-star, which is, like, barely any platinum. Uh, the more expensive ones, like, 
three out of five star, four out of five star gems, I'm seeing those go like 100,000 to 300,000 platinum. And of course, as Josh Strife Hayes discovered, any legendary gem that ends up on the market board is one that came from a paid legendary crest because it's only the eternal legendary crests, which are the ones you directly buy from the in-game store, that actually drop items that are bound, or sorry, that are unbound and that can actually be traded. Now, of course, that does mean that, that whenever somebody... So for, a, let's say, a four-star gem to be in the market board, somebody will have had to have paid whatever the average is, yeah. many dollars, many, many dollars to get that gem in the first place. And then when someone buys that, they're doing it with platinum, which they've almost certainly bought from the store. So Blizzard's basically just getting like, you know, double the money for the one gem. Now, yeah, that's the beautiful thing about player market boards that you actually completely control and never let anyone actually cash out of. Yeah. That's the whole thing about the entirety of all of these virtual economies are designed. So it is just you transfer your real money into virtual money and the virtual money doesn't ever go anywhere. So it's all the real money funnels into the companies in charge of it. That's the same with all the play to earn thing going on. It's all just a massive thing of, oh, you'll never be able to cash out because you're working in our economy. You know, yeah. you sold your soul to the company store, except in this case, the company store doesn't actually offer anything useful for sale. And here's the crazy thing. So it's now it's time to explain why this magic find actually matters, because yep. realistically, a premium player can get like double the magic find of a freed player so much faster, right? So now we need to talk about these hidden caps. So Echo Hack and his friends have been doing some work in the gameplay, um, and they basically reported that after six legendary drops a day, your drop rate is severely decreased for future drops. After a group bonus for six normal gems a day, your rate severely decreases. Side quests stop giving rewards after five a day. Purple boss drops, those stop after five a day. Random map events stop giving rewards after five a day. Zoltan cool treasure rooms are limited to five a day. And the hidden layer dungeons stop giving gem rewards after just a few completed sections. So yeah. the game is by default very heavily throttled. Yeah, and that's a thing where if your magic find is substantially higher, then that doesn't increase the amount of rolls you get. It increases the quality of rolls. And if you think about it, you've got six rolls a day for legendaries in the average day. Then that just means you're going to get better gear across the thing yeah because obviously in a world where magic finds really strong for pay to win players but there's no cap then that's where you go okay well it's pay to it's pay for convenience it's pay to not grind and that's the kind of thing people find a little bit more acceptable in isolation but they are just full mask off and just no sorry capped sorry if you if you if you won't pay you will get a substantially worse and a substantially slower experience that's how we do things here now yeah so that's basically the thing with these soft caps. There's like two yeah. ways that magic find can work. So yeah, as you said, if it is true to its tooltip, then of the limited quantity of drops you'll get in a day, you will just get better ones, more chances of triple stat legendaries. That means you'll get far more combat power and combat power ends up being one of the major things that actually gates your progress. And then of course, if magic find just increases the drop rate, not the quality, then that would basically mean that perhaps you'd be able to push through the soft cap and continue earning things based, by overcoming that magic find. But that doesn't seem to be the case Based on far. what I was just looking at while you're talking about it, no, it doesn't improve. Yeah. It is purely quality of drops as opposed to rate of drops. That is essentially so much more egregious in yeah. what it does. And then just so you understand why this is important, when you actually get to level 60, then the Paragon levels kick in, right? Now, the Paragon levels are not particularly crazy from a, like, a pay-to-win perspective. Now, obviously, one of your main sources of experience points in this game is going to be the events and the codex that give you Battle Pass progress. So, most of your leveling is tied to going through the Battle Pass. Obviously, that still applies to the free Battle Pass. But all the time, you'll be looking at all the rewards that technically you've earned but haven't unlocked because you've progressed through the Battle Pass, but maybe you haven't purchased the premium one. So that's like one way they drive you into it. But with the Paragon levels, they kind of work on the like server, the world Paragon level, which basically kind of rubber bands players who are behind by giving them an XP boost. And then it kind of slows players who are ahead. And that then means that combat rating is one of the really important things because combat rating does gate your access to the higher hell difficulties. So if your magic find is increased by having loads of legendary gems. You'll be getting more triple stat legendary and set items, 
which means you're going to have more combat rating. Of course, in addition to the fact that the highly upgraded gems will just give you more combat rating anyway because they're super powerful and then the resonance that they provide to your character. And then, of course, there's all of the other ways that are pay to win, like, uh, you know, more Halicrary slots. That's monetized. Heradric Legacy. That's monetized. And I'm sure there's other stuff that I mean, somehow yeah. slipped my mind. I mean, you even get a magic find bonus for, I think, your warband or your clan whenever you win the Cycle of Strife PvP stuff. So yes. that's the case of your, if you pay to win PvP, that's extra magic find in a case of what can only be described as the rich get richer game design. Yeah, and if the person who's controlling the immortal is a pay to win player with yeah. like high resonance, you're screwed as a shadow. From what I've researched. And it's the kind of thing I was going to go and do, like a dive into that mode, because all I've done is the tutorial. I read that, not playing. (laughs) I saw, I think it was Rich Campbell sharing some PvP. Saw how pay to win the PvP is. Cool. I'm not even bothering for my review because it's not a video game anymore. Never was. Never intended to be. Yeah. So, uh, I, (laughs) you know, I don't think we're going to find too many more bizarre surprises. Well, uh, for like, monetization in this game because we already found so many but uh i felt like you know i sort of discovered this one blew my mind a bit when i was just sort of polishing up my thoughts to do the a video that's not a review anymore it's more of a this is how i was completely ground down by this game mm. and how the free hit of the first 30 levels is just not representative of the experience anyone who's talking about a 20 hour story that you get for free total bullshit mm. uh, the story's utterly rubbish there's like, you know, there is no like main quest. It's just, yeah, you got to destroy the world stone shards, but it, it doesn't really feel like an overall cohesive story. You know, it's not like a, I know that the D3 story is like a mess, but at least they try to tell a, you know, you could say like a cinematic story, right? With characters that kind of went through shit. Immortal just makes no attempt at that. So no, it, like the game becomes so much more transparent at the end game. And then there's other stuff like, at the higher hell levels. I think it's at hell two, you need two players for a dungeon. It's like hell three, you need four players for a dungeon. Then people are really struggling to find players, of course, because of the combat rating stuff. And all of this will just drive people into more of those purchases. Yep. Because the more that you are intimately aware of combat rating, the more you're going to want to progress faster and the more that all this monetization comes in. And the game does a good job of not actually having you be aware of any of this as you are leveling up. And that is the source of all of the very charitable opinions. Yeah, I mean, it's the exact same way Lost Ark goes, where Lost Ark is a fantastic game in terms of the exploratory element of all of the content and all of like the how front-loaded it is. And obviously their like combat uh, elements and their bosses are really, really cool, but it does all kind of hit the end and then you just hit this wall of, oh, now item levels, that, that's what you have to do get your item level up and that's the thing that i think is like really key to modern design where they take what used to be this like super multifaceted system and that still exists in the likes of poe where there's just it's almost too complicated for you to understand and that's where the depth comes in that's where you get to sit down and go okay well how am i going to have all of these little gameplay things interact but then for the i guess for the uh maybe i want to say the in for the pure don't mean pay to win hit audience it's all been simplified. Now you see, oh, there's your item level. Oh, there's, you know, I guess in the gear score, there's your uh, combat rating. There's your offense and defense ratings. There's your resonance. And all that stuff is like super simplified. So people have that knowledge of, oh, I can make this number bigger. Because yeah. you don't want people to go, oh, well, you don't want them to sit and ruminate on what to do. You don't want them to think, oh, well, hmm, do I alter my build? You know, do I, is this build like kind of a little bit weak overall? Do I have, do I go and or go farm out a couple things and rebuild that and like that's a whole bit of gameplay in and of itself no you just go oh you've hit a wall with stuff just pen will make you a bit stronger yeah. by this one number that ultimately scales everything and then even things like the challenge rifts rift. those are like the one thing that could be fun because it's where the game can actually throw a bit of difficulty at you and i'm sure it's like that for the hell dungeons as well but here's the thing with those it's tied into a leaderboard system and a weekly leaderboard system and the higher you are up in that leaderboard the more rewards you get in the next week yeah a whale is going to completely demolish you, so you have absolutely no hope in hell of doing well on that leaderboard because someone else can just pay to win and the rich will get richer. Yeah, of really. course, the rich will get richer in terms of their in-game rewards. They will <laughs> also be, you know, literally getting poorer because, uh, you know, the way the spending works. Yep, absolutely. That's basically it for the video. I just wanted to kind of swoop in here, give you guys a final little uh, 
word of how uh, crazily ingrained pay to win is into the very progression, the very essence, the core DNA of this game. And um, that's it. That's really all that I've got. Keep an eye on. So this is Bellular News. There's, of course, Bellular Warcraft. And then also there's Bellular Gaming, which is our variety gaming channel. Um, my more polished Diablo video will be up there soon-ish. And hopefully I won't have to talk about the damn thing again. <laughs> okay. They'll, don't worry, Blizzard will find a way to make you talk about it again. I'm sure. So that's it for me. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you want to support the game that we are currently developing, you can check out The Pale Beyond, a uh, role-playing game, which is on Steam. So you can check out and perhaps wish this if it uh, catches your interest. Have a great day. Me and Matt, we'll see you next time.